Stop learning mathematics the wrong way. Most people who study mathematics study it by sitting down and doing math problems. And that's what you're supposed to do, but it's how you solve those problems that matter. In this video, I'm going to give you some strategies that you can use that will help you learn math a lot better, a lot better. And I know that these strategies work. I know that this method works because this is something that I have told people to do and they do and it works. This is something that I've done and it works. So this is a proven way to learn math and it is probably the number one reason that people fail at math, especially people who study. So if, if you don't practice math and, and you're not good at math, then you're not gonna get good at math. But if you practice math, if you're trying to learn math, if you're putting in the work and you still can't get it, then the stuff I'm gonna talk about in this video is precisely what is going to help you get extremely good at math. So let's get started right away. All right, again, I'm going to assume for the purposes of this video that you're already in a routine where you're doing mathematics. So this video is not gonna talk about, you know, what the best time to study is or, you know, the best um, you know location and all that stuff or, you know, study tips and stuff like that. No, this video is about you and your learning individually. You know, how can you learn math the best way possible to become extremely good at mathematics in a very short period of time. When you're studying, when you're sitting down with a piece of paper and a pencil and you're doing mathematics, you want to make sure that when you're solving problems, if you really want to make sure you understand them and you really want to learn, don't have any resources, right? So that is key. You can have them near you, but when you're solving the problem, you don't want to look at the internet. You don't want to look at your notes. You don't want to look at the book. You want to do it cold. You want to make sure you can do everything without looking at your notes. So what happens is, you know, you try to solve a problem and you get stuck, right? So when you get stuck, what do you do? You look at your notes. That's okay, right? You look at your notes, you finish the problem, you do whatever it takes to solve that problem. But just because you have the answer doesn't mean you know what you're doing, okay? Just because you solve the problem doesn't mean you know how to solve it. You cannot lie to yourself. You have to know, you have to be true to yourself. And, and the way to do that, the way to force yourself to be true to yourself so you really understand the material, so you really know is to do it without looking at your notes. So you work through the problem, you get stuck, and then you look at your notes, and then you finish it, and you just repeat the process until you can do it without looking at your notes. What's going to happen when you do this strategy, guaranteed, if, if you're really putting in a lot of effort and you're really struggling, what's going to happen is when you do this, you're going to realize that sometimes on some problems, you're going to basically memorize the problem because you're looking at your notes, you're working through it, you don't understand. You look at your notes, you work through it, you don't understand. You do that enough times, eventually you're doing it without looking at your notes and then you've memorized it. You might say, well, then you're not really learning. Well, the thing is, a lot of times, learning, like real understanding, comes from memorization first. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't focus on understanding. You should definitely always try to focus on understanding. But memorization is also a very important part of learning mathematics, you know, you know, especially in a class like trig. I always think of trigonometry because it's a class that is really not that difficult if you force yourself to memorize a couple of things at the beginning. For example, the, the trig function values of, you know, the special angles and then how to find how to find them in any quadrant, right? How to find the sine of, you know, 11 pi over three by hand without a calculator, stuff like that. So you get good at stuff like that by focusing on both memorization and understanding. That actually requires both things. And those are the things that make you better at mathematics. Question things, ask yourself why constantly. So when you, when you work through that problem and you're looking at your notes and then you're trying to do it again without looking, right? When you're trying to solve math cold and, and you get stuck, 
Try to really question things. Why? And even when you figure it out, why does the problem work? This is especially true for more advanced mathematics. Like if you're in a proof-based math class, you really want to take your time and you really want to understand everything carefully. And the same is true in lower level math classes too. If you're in a basic algebra class, you know, focus on the why, really understand all the steps. You know, why can you do this? Why can you multiply by this? You know, why do, why do things work? Don't get hung up, right? Don't spend three hours questioning something. Um, I mean, you can, if you have the time, if you have the luxury, if you have the time to do that, go for it. But if you're on a time crunch, if, if you're trying to learn math, as fast as possible, if you're just trying to get good, maybe you have a test you have to pass, maybe you're just trying to get through a math class, this will work, right? Practice until you can do it without looking at your notes. Work through your mistakes solo, so by yourself. So when you're working through that problem and you get stuck, you know, to, get, to reach true mastery, you wanna, you wanna think about the problem. Here's the thing with math. If you don't think about it, you won't learn it. So this is a big, a big problem with this procedure. So if you're constantly looking at your notes, if you're constantly looking at the back of the book, you know, to check, you know, to, you know, for hints or whatever, if you're not thinking about it on your own, if you're not putting in the effort with your mind, if your mind isn't working, then your mind is not going to learn. It's like you have to work your mind in order for your mind to get stronger. And you do that by getting stuck and thinking about the problems. You know, you're doing a problem of proof, let's say an advanced calculus, and you're saying, okay, you know, how, how can I find delta? And so you kind of work backwards and you have to figure that out. You can't just look up the value of delta in the proof in the book. You know, books will give you the value and a lot of times they won't show you how to find it. So you have to do the work. The thinking that you put in is what makes you learn. And unfortunately, thinking requires two things, right? It requires effort and it requires time, and time is limited. So that's why, you know, you can't think forever. You have to have like a balance, right? You get stuck, you think about it for a while, you do your best, you, you, you give it a good go, and you say, okay, I can't take it anymore. Then you pick up that piece of paper, you look at your notes, you look in the book, then you look, okay? So make sure that when you're doing this procedure, your goal is always, right, is always to do things on your own. That has to be the number one priority throughout your entire study session, okay? So every problem you do, your goal is to do it cold. Why? Well, think about it. If you're in a classroom, whether it be high school, college, whatever, your grade comes from tests, right? And in testing situations, they want you to be able to do things cold, right? So if you get really, really good at this technique, if you get really good at doing things cold, you're essentially becoming really, really good at taking tests. So you're essentially becoming a person who's gonna have a very good grade in a math class. This can change your grades, which, is, I mean, I'm not saying if you get an A, it's gonna change your life, but I've never heard anyone say, oh, I can't believe I got an A in that class, this sucks. No, right? It's a good thing, it doesn't hurt to have straight A's or A's and B's or, you know, good grades in general. True mastery of mathematics occurs when you reach the point where you can do everything solo by yourself, right? You want to always aim for that, okay? I want to emphasize that so much in this video because I have seen people in situations who study. They are people who work hard, people who come to class every day, they sit in the front, they ask questions, they do all the homework. Test time comes, they fail, right? They crash and burn. And then, you know, they come see me usually, or, and I tell them, make sure you can do everything cold. They go back, they do that, and they do better, right? 99% of the time. Why? Because it works, right? It works because if you can do something without looking at your resources, that means you can do really well on a test. That means you're going to do well in your class, and that's going to help your life. It, this is good stuff. This will help you get better at math. And again, don't fall into the trap of, I mean, you're going to end up memorizing some of the harder stuff, but don't fall into the trap of just constantly relying on those notes, right? Always keep your eye on the prize. True mastery occurs, you know, absolute mastery occurs when you can do everything on your own. And I know it's harder. I know it's harder. That, that pain, that feeling you get, when you know what I'm talking about, right? When you're doing a problem, you're like, uh, I, I don't know what to do. It doesn't make sense. 
that, that, that confusion, that, that horrible feeling where you just don't get it and you feel like you're not going to be able to ever get it, you have to push through that feeling, right? You have to be strong. And that's how you learn, right? That thinking, the thinking that you put in, the effort that you put in to, to fight through that confusion is how you learn. And then when you, when you don't have enough effort, that's when you look at your notes. Like, okay, the problem has defeated me for the time being. Let me look at my notes. Oh, I see what I need to do. That's how you do it. You know, you divide that way. Then you go back and finish it. Then you go back and do it again. Another strategy I have that can help you with this procedure uh, and avoid, you know, memorizing things is let's say you encounter a hard problem, right? And you're working through that problem and you get stuck. So you look at your notes and then you do it again. And no matter what, it just feels like you can't do the problem without looking at your notes. You just feel like there's something wrong with you. What do you do? You table that problem, right? You put it aside and then you come back to it later. I used to do this, uh, I started doing this in differential equations uh, when I was an undergraduate. And what I would do is I would take index cards and I would put uh, homework problems in the index cards. And I gave them to my friend and I told him to shuffle the cards and give me a card. And he would throw cards at me and each card had a differential equation on it. And I would just solve it. And it was awesome. I got 110 on the first test. It was a perfect score. I'm pretty sure I had a perfect score uh, on every single test in that class um, because I studied like crazy, right? I, I use the method that I'm explaining in this video, right? Make sure you can do everything cold. And those index cards that my friend was you know, throwing at me and telling me to do the problems uh, from, that was a way to test myself. So you can do that too. You can take problems and put them on a piece of paper or just randomly pick a problem from each section, you know, take your pen and go, boom, <laughs> whatever problem that falls on, you do that one, right? Whatever it takes, or just randomly take three problems from each homework section if you're doing online homework. Find some way to randomize it, randomly pick some problems and do them. Um, the real way to do the mastery is, you know, after you finish all the problems, you know, every single homework problem, uh, for your test. After you go over all your notes, you go back and you just look it over and make sure you can do it, right? You don't have to redo it, but just look at it. And if you have any doubt, if you have any doubt that you can't do it solo, then you need to do it because that is the goal, right? Ultimate mastery will occur when you can do everything with zero resources. And that's why tests are the way they are, right? People know this, right? That's why they have exams the way they are because they want to make sure that people really know the material. Well, that's it. Remember, focus on doing everything by yourself. If you can do that, you're, you're going to get a lot better at math. I mean, this is something that I have seen people do repeatedly over the years, and you would be surprised. You would be surprised at the difference. You know, people go from failing, from, you know, getting a 30% on a test, and then doing this, you know, taking this advice, and, and really, again, just focusing on that, self-mastery, making sure you can do it cold. And the grade just doubles. I mean, I've, I've seen like miracles happen, it seems like. Why? Because that's how you learn, right? That's how you know, because if you can do it on your own at home, you can do it on your own in a testing situation. And that's just, that's just the reality of it. Some people get test anxiety, that does happen. But I think the best way to fight that is just to really make sure you can do it on your own, right? No resources, right? sit down and do it. It just takes extra effort to get that good at mathematics, right? So this method that I'm telling you, it's not, it's not like a fast way to learn math. It's just a way to learn math that's going to really make you learn it. Like if you do this, you will learn math and you will do well. If you found this video helpful, feel free to hit like, subscribe, share, and all that stuff. I have another YouTube channel, The Internet Sorcerer, where I post random stuff, so check that out. Check out my eBay store. I have math books. Link is in the description. Check out my courses. Links are in the description or on my website, mathsorcerer.com or freemathvids.com. If you use my links uh, for my courses, you get a good price because I lowered the prices to the bare minimum. Also, it helps me greatly when you use my links. Again, description of the video uh, or my website, freemathvids.com. If you have any advice for people who are trying to learn math, you know, leave a comment. Whenever you leave comments on videos, it helps people, right? People read the comments. And I think that the key takeaway from this video, the most important thing you should take away is every single time, I mean, every single time you're doing mathematics, always, right? It's like a puzzle. You, know, you, you sit down and, and you try to solve it. It's that thinking process that makes you better. And 
you have to be true to yourself. You have to be honest, right? You have to say to yourself, hey, I don't know this math, or hey, I do know this math. And to be true to yourself, to be really true, to test yourself, you have to be able to do those problems without looking at any resources. When you get to that level, that's when you're reaching like the ultimate level of math, right? And you'll become really, really good. I hope it's been helpful. As always, keep doing mathematics.